Michael Lopez, and thanks for watching Hack the File. On today's episode, um, we're going to be going over um, Cyber Law by Jeff Kosef. Enjoy. All right. So, I've been gone for a minute. Um... Like I said, I've had health problems, and every time I think I'm out of the woods, I'm not. So I'm just getting used to all this medication, so. But I'm feeling 100% better, uh, getting my medication dosed up right. And, um, starting to go golfing again and stuff, so, um, I should be able to get through one of these videos. I made a couple of them that they're all right. Um, I like them, but I don't know how exciting they are. So, <laughs> but this one, this 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 video is gonna be cool because um, I'm gonna go over my thoughts and ideas of cybersecurity law. So I bought this book. And I'm going to, you know, like I always do, I'm going to go through and read some of it, but I'm not going to go through and uh, read this uh, <clears throat> um, chapter by chapter like I usually do. Just because it's kind of dry and it's kind of a hard read. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to talk about it and give you guys ideas if you, you know, if you guys are into cyber street, which I'm sure you are, um, this is a pretty interesting uh, area of cybersecurity, right? So not, that not a lot of people um, dive into, right? So you're gonna probably study this and in, in school for amongst other things, right? Defensive, offensive. But, you know, this is how I see cyber law, right? Let's say you're a hacker. And, or let's say, okay, no, I, I don't, I don't condone crime, okay? I'm too old. <laughs> uh, at all, right? So, but... If you are a criminal, right, you're gonna need representation if you get caught, right? So who's to say that they're not entitled to um, somebody that, let's say a fellow hacker, okay, that knows the ins and outs and outs and ends of what the person is doing. Um, let's say he's a uh, ethical hacker, a white hacker, or whatever kind of hacker. He, he knows his stuff, right? Maybe he's not a bad hacker anymore. He's ethical now, right? And let's say he focuses his time on cybersecurity law, and he uh, basically is is basically a criminal defense attorney, um, but but of cybersecurity, right? Um, and he and he defends criminals, so. You know, it's kind of tab. You know, the you know the, the self righteousness of some people just just uh, blows my mind um, because you know people will say you know uh, they don't deserve well <laughs> not they don't deserve but uh, what am I trying to get at? So we know that there are criminal defense attorneys, right? that defend criminals and help them get off of doing time. Now, it's because that we need to have um, representation, right, by law. And it's in our constitution, right? But it's not only for that. It's not only just because of that. It's because um, everybody deserves a defense, right? So. Um, hackers 
uh, let's say bad hackers when they're doing bad things. Let's say, let's just say like a drug dealer or somebody that's on on the dark web or whatever. I'm sure they know how to get away with <clears throat> with um, getting caught and all that, right? And shipping and you know whatever they're doing that's illegal, but usually they get caught. And when they get caught, do they know cybersecurity law? I don't know. Maybe they know some. Maybe they know. The, maybe they know their their state, their local state, or whatever. Maybe they know somewhat of what they're doing, but most of the time, they only know the most important things. Like, if I do get caught, they can't convict me because of this. You know, they don't have this. They don't have that. But if they did dive into cybersecurity law, like books like this, and, and just read and read and read and read. Then they would be versed on what they can or what they can be charged with or not, because the FBI or the CIA or whatnot are always charging them with something or other that they have no idea if it's true or not. They're they're gonna scare them. They're gonna pull them in. They're gonna say, "Look, we can get you on this. We can get you on that." And by by the time they say that, they're already busted. They have no access to. To, uh, I mean, they probably have access to books and stuff, but I mean, imagine how hard it's going to be to get all that, or I, I don't know. Maybe they're on bail and they don't know where to look. You know, this is where you look cyber law, right? Cyber security law books. Um, like I said, I'm not advocating crime and all that, but you know, you have to understand that everybody needs um, representation and needs defense. <laughs> Now, on the other hand, of course, you can you can also use this to prosecute, right? You can be on a team, you can be a hacker, and you can focus on cybersecurity law for many years, read tens of thousands of these, I mean tens of thousands, I'm sorry, ten, ten of these books, you know, and all that. But um, I know right now that there's, I just Googled it, I guess, I, I don't know for sure, right, that there is lawyers that specialize in um, IT or cybersecurity law right so what they do is they have they're already lawyers and then they learn as much as they can or they get like IT certificates and all that well you so most hackers already have all that you know I was googling it and it was like how do you become a, a IT uh, cybersecurity lawyer and it says you know get certificates in IT, do this, do that. So basically they're just lawyers and then they get their IT certificate and they learn about, they read books like this, I guess, and that's what they're doing, right? Okay, so their law degree, does that matter? I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking about it. Does that, if, does any of their law degree, if it doesn't pertain to cybersecurity, I mean, of course it matters because it, you know, but I'm, it teaches them how to, to study other things. But does it matter when they're going up a, it, defending a, a hacker in a cybersecurity law case? Now, now what I'm thinking is advisors, right? So somebody hires a, a cybersecurity. I mean, somebody hires an attorney and it's for a cybersecurity crime. Let's say he, he was a drug dealer or something or any kind of criminal, right, on... He got caught. And he's on. Um, <clears throat> he got caught in the dark web, or something. Let's see. And he has money or whatever, and he hires an attorney to get him off. But the attorney doesn't really. It, the attorney needs somebody that is a professional. That somebody like or, or whatever, ex criminal, ex professional, ex ethical hacker, ethical hacker. It doesn't matter. And um, that knows cybersecurity law, right? And then knows what he's the ins and outs of what he was actually doing. And so, and how you know, and how to get him off and all that. And, and, and then can it be an advisor? Um, you would think that person would make some good money. You know, I'm just trying to look at this like there's a lot of open markets, and a lot, there's gotta be. I mean, there's going to be strictly cybersecurity law lawyers. Now, there, there might be already. I don't know. I don't think so. I never. I had never heard of them. 
uh, that just go to school for four years to learn cybersecurity law, right? <clears throat> and there's many facets for that. Um, and I'm going to go through that when we go through this book. So, uh, so here's the cybersecurity law. We come here and I'm just going to go to the top and I'm going to go through each one of these little chapters, right? All right, so my eyes. So, Jeff Kosef, okay, this is the third edition, it's got a bunch of editions. Okay, so look, data security laws and enforcement actions. So this would be a good one to read, right? If you're, um, if you're hacking people's information, PII, right? Or what, what not. State data breach notification laws. State data security laws. State data disposal laws. I'm sure this goes state by state, right? State data disposal laws. Let's look at here. Identifying internal and external security risks. System safeguards. Technical security. Uh, state data disposal laws. Most, but not all, states require companies to take reasonable steps. Okay, so this would be if you're working for a company, right? A company would love to have somebody versed in in, um, in this area, right? Especially if they got sued or they got a fine for not disposing their data right. <clears throat> Most IT professionals know about this, though. Um... Excuse you, oh look, Idaho. I don't know how this book works yet, but let's go here. Wait, let's just skip that one. Go to the next one. Cybersecurity requirements for special. Cyber, uh, look, IoT cybersecurity laws. In September 2018, California became the first state to impose specific cybersecurity requirements for IoT devices. Uh, although the law does not impose terrible specific requirements, it's marked. Oh my! It marked a renewed focus on the security of cameras, appliances, and other devices that are connected to the internet. So here's the little cybersecurity law, right? What is this? So 64, you can go to see all footnotes. So does this not tell you about the law? The, the law does not provide substantial guidance is how I would so maybe just California has some kind of IOT law look the law does not provide okay so this is it California law applies to manufacturers of connected devices which is defined as any device or other physical object that is capable of connecting to the internet directly or indirectly and then it is assigned to the internet protocol address or bluetooth device the law requires that manufacturers connect devices so you can, so you can work for a company and uh, make sure that they're following the law cyber security laws you could be the cyber security department in the company that's manufacturing iot devices maybe little bluetooth speakers you know and and maybe you know 
they've been hacked and sued before and they lost PII and they were like, huh, we need somebody to make sure we're doing it right, you know, we're following the cybersecurity laws. We can go work for them. The law requires that manufacturers of connected devices sold in California implemented a reasonable security feature or features. These features should be appropriate to the nature of the function of the device. And we all know that all these IoT devices have no security basically on them or they're so easily hacked it's not even funny. <clears throat> the password is in the manuals and the manuals are all the same and the passwords are all the same. And it's just ridiculous. The appropriate, uh, 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 appropriate to the information it may collect, contain, or transmit and designed to protect the device and any information contained therein from unauthorized access. Destruction, modification, or disclosure. Law does not provide substantial guidance on how an IoT device should satisfy these requirements. It does state, however, that a reasonable uh, security feature exists if a pre programmed password is unique for each device manufacturer. I see. This is, this is what they're doing. It's so easily hacked. It was pre programmed password. Is not unique to so every device manufacturer. They're all the same because the company doesn't think that people are going to hack them, and, and rightly so. We're, we're, companies don't have time to worry that everybody is tech savvy on that level. You know, it, common sense will tell you that the average person doesn't is not a hacker, doesn't know how to use any command line, doesn't know how to program, doesn't doesn't have any knowledge of how to to, to uh, hack this device but but the, the reality is is that any curious mind can figure it out that has any kind of just not even just basic level uh, uh, computer knowledge you know you're hooking up this device you're going in there and you're going and you read the manual okay and, and you're like this has it has a website that I'm connecting to it has a password and then the only thing different is my IP address or whatever uh, so you're going in there and then the curious mind is like wait a minute I bet you the password is the same on uh, uh, all across the board and all it takes is that person to figure that out somehow maybe go back and to the store and open a box and look at the manual on the next one it's probably the same go man it is the same that would be the easiest way I mean that's not the easiest way but that would be like one way or you know or you can get online and be like what's the it, the basic what's the password and Google tells you almighty Google tells you the answer and it's like uh, it's the same it's not hard right for a curious mind to do things that's what that's what hackers are the curious minds they're getting in these uh, curious mind states. That's it. it. It has nothing to do with somebody that's so tech savvy that, you know. Um, I'll give me one second. It's so tech savvy and just, just, you know, like the tech hackers you see on TV. It starts with curiosity. And you're, you're, you're just like, well, let me see. And you start messing with things. And then you start messing with things for a long time. So let's say I wanted to be an IoT hacker. And right? I was just curious. And I found that, you know, basic thing. Um, I would just go spend hours and hours and, and either go from there and, and branch off to other things. Or just focus on IoT devices and be really, really good at hacking them. Um... Anyway, I got off the topic. Anyways, so <clears throat> because it is unlikely for a webcam or appliance manufacturer to avoid selling the product product into California, the law is likely to become a de facto nationwide requirement. So what this is saying is that in California they have some kind of law that makes it not uh, you can't have the same login. I mean, pass uh, yeah, password for all IoT devices. But it's saying it might be nationwide, but it's not. 
<clears throat> in, in 2019, Oregon passed an IoT security law similar to California's, but is limited to household devices. Like California's law, it requires manufacturer IoT devices to use reasonable security features, such as unique passwords. Okay, so Iowa did it too in 2019, so 2021, 2020, that's four years ago. I'm sure a bunch of other states have jumped on board. And it would be wise for them to, but see how like frontier this is. Now, if you're uh, hacking, and you're on the bad side of this. How would you use this, right, to 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 your advantage? You'd most likely try to hack states that have no laws on IoT devices. That way, it's, it's you know you can get away with it, right? Or like if you were defending somebody that got hacked, that was hacking into devices or whatnot, and, and you know you needed an attorney and you were looking up laws, and I think this is just, this book would be just a reference to a, to an idea. Then you would have to go and do some more research on your own, right? Which is fine. So now I know that few states have passed laws yet since four years ago. Let's see, let's see how many more have now. Well, it's been four years. That's how I would use this book. Then I would be like, okay, um, we're in New York. Does New York have any, you know, and anybody could do that, right? But the reality is that not a lot of people understand about hacking and what he's doing. So you, you would have to look up the law and see if you can use that to um, get them off. Get get the get them off, you know, of of the crime, right? So, um, and you would and you would know if they're if the FBI is bluffing. You would know, and a normal lawyer can do this, right? Quick, but let, let's say he has to go to trial, okay? Let's just say, and the normal lawyer comes in and says, and let's say it's something complex, not just basic like this. And the normal old lawyer goes in and says, you know, says what he says, and <clears throat> he gets cross-examined. And the cross-examiner says, "Hey, so what is your degree in uh, criminal defense? So do you have any specialty or anything like that in uh, IoT devices or, or hacking or IT?" And he says, "No." Then how fuck how powerful is that? Uh, <coughs> um, defense. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? <coughs> He's not an uh, expert. <coughs> but if you have an expert in, in hacking and cyber law, and he can prove it, <coughs> let's say he's a cyber law attorney. You know, that would be great, wouldn't it? <coughs> and I suspect that in the future here, there's going to be <clears throat> there's going to be um, rampant cybercrime in the next ten years. Um, there already is, right? But it's going to get worse because now there's <clears throat> information is so easily obtainable through Google and chatbot. To be able to to get all this information to learn how to hack, you could probably ask Chatbot GBT, or whatever it's called, how to hack <clears throat> anything now, and it'll tell you step by step. Now, now knowing the the uh, technical part of it, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> you can learn that as well too, pretty fast. You know, <clears throat> people that um, people that uh, want to start crime organizations, right? All you need is one guy with a degree that knows how to do all this stuff. Uh, write down a whole list or a plan of what how he's going to contribute to a cybercrime, right? I mean, they have them all the time. You go to India, they've got whole organ legit organizations that are doing cybercrime, right? Somebody has to know how to do that first and then train the monkeys how to do it, right? <clears throat> okay, so now let's go to the other the other side. Um, 
somebody has to defend these monkeys or defend these people when they get caught. So how, how do you do that? You know, you learn cyber law. You know, you learn what they're doing, if it's even, I mean, because right now there is basically no, not a lot of laws right now. That's what this book is, is where I'm getting the gist of this book. And this is a very interesting read. Like, like I don't care what anybody says. I can sit here and read and read and read and read and read this. Like this, this was so interesting. This one little IOT cyber law section, right? To know that, <clears throat> to know these two paragraphs that I just read. I mean, it was so interesting, right? Um, so I'm gonna sit here and read and read and read this just for myself, right? Just to have the knowledge, and then one day maybe I'll work in the field, or maybe one day I'll set up an advising uh, cyber law company, you know, where I can advise people, or, or maybe somebody got caught with, you know, some kind of cyber <coughs> um, um, crime and, and, and needs defense or something, you know. Maybe somebody, uh, um, you know, some company is looking for somebody that knows more about you know iot device laws and stuff like that because they're manufacturing them i mean this this has so much potential and i'm telling you in the future um there is going to be full-blown cyber cyber uh security um, law uh lawyers now there might be some now that specialize in it but they have a law degree and then they specialize in cyber law right <clears throat> which I'm sure there there has to be one or two, there has to be some right, but I'm talking about full blown cybersecurity law. Well, that's all they're doing is going. To, but see, that's the thing: is there enough cybersecurity laws, right, to study over what six years? <clears throat> but that's another thing: if there's not enough cybersecurity law to study over six years, then what's going on? Like we need to get some cybersecurity laws in place. So this is just a, a wonderful, wonderful area of topic, I would say, right? To uh, to look into and investigate. Start with this book, you know, um, and just start reading, you know, uh, anti-hacking laws, right? Let's go here, anti-hacking laws. U.S. legislators have passed statutes to address what they view as increasingly big threat of computer hacking. This book at some this chapter looks at some of the laws commonly used to pro so this book is basically giving you a starting point <clears throat> is how i see it this chapter looks at some of the laws commonly used to prosecute people who access computer software and data without authorization okay so now if you know the laws that they're using then you know how to stay out of the law or uh, so you don't get caught. Now, if you're a hacker, you would read this so you so you uh, so you don't get pro uh, prosecuted, right? Or you can stay with with outside of the law and you, you don't get caught or you get prosecuted. If you do get caught, you won't do it in time. <clears throat> now, if you're an ethical hacker, you're doing this so you can set up um, some kind of plan to um, get get somebody prosecuted if they get hacked. Um, if you're if you're uh, an attorney, you're you're helping you know prosecute or defend, right? Um, if you uh, um, you're gonna you're gonna study these laws, but or you can advise other attorneys and be the and be the um, you know hey uh, this is this is Michael Lopez. He's he's a uh, uh, you know he's been in cybersecurity for ten years. He's got you know, he's done anywhere from this to that. He, you know, he's got a master's degree that which includes uh, cybersecurity law, or he, you know, has, you know, he, he you know, he, whatever, whatever the case may be, right? He is an expert on cybersecurity law, right? Um, that would be cool, you know, to to make money like that, where you're you're either being an advisor or you're being um, on, on either side, right? Prosecuting or defending. So, so I'm gonna read this book and have fun, right? And a lot of people, you know, they're, they're, man, that sounds boring. It's not. This is this is what our field is, right? You know, um, cybersecurity is is either um, hacking, not hacking, defense. I mean, you're gonna find so many sections in cybersecurity. It's not even funny. You know, policies and procedures. 
uh, um, you know, uh, cyber law, um, um, you know, uh, digital forensics. You know, you're, you're, it's it's got a vast, um, uh, just vast uh, sec different sections of cybersecurity. And so, <clears throat> um, this is one of them. Um, this is, I would say, is one of, is one of the m most that interest me. And if there was a degree in cybersecurity law or a pathway to become a cybersecurity lawyer, I think I would do that. That would be awesome, right? This is this is just so interesting right anti-hacking laws and you know the you know the computer fraud and abuse act cfaa uh we know about this stuff right <clears throat> going through school and getting your degrees um you know about this stuff offhand like this is a this book actually i got from my school right and um they study this book in in their in some of their classes like their you know cybersecurity law class or whatever um so you're gonna learn but you and you're gonna learn about a lot of these laws right the the, the computer fraud and abuse act you know uh, when you're learning about cybersecurity, right because it was passed a while ago and there are and that's why cybersecurity is a crime because it was you know these laws were passed a while ago but these are large blanket um, at, uh, laws, right? <clears throat> and they're used to establish hacking as a crime, basically. Um, and they, and you know, I, have, I haven't gone through the whole thing or whatever, right? The the whole act and read it, um, but you would probably do that, right? If you're getting into cyber law. So there's, you know, there's the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, you know, so you can't still, you know, copyright stuff. The Economic Espionage Act. You know, there's a lot. Of, it's telling you about a lot of different acts, and you got to read all of them, right? Hmm. See, look. Unfortunately, some anti-hacking laws were written before the arrival of many technologies. That are now see commonplace. See, just like I said, they're old. They were established back in the days just to just to say that hacking is a crime. <clears throat> um, according to some cases, there are disagreements about the reach of the laws and what constitutes illegal hacking. See, this is what you're working in. This is the gray area. Accordingly, in many cases are disagreements about the reach of laws and what constitutes illegal hacking that should lead to criminal sentence and civil liberty liability <clears throat> now this is the gray area that you that you're going to be working in on either side when you learn cyber law right um i feel that everybody uh should have a defense criminals and um and uh, non-criminals, right? But um, there is no, I don't think, I mean, just like there's criminal defense attorneys and there's uh, prosecutors, there has to be uh, cybersecurity law prosecutors. I'm sure they have invested in heavily in it, uh, trying to prosecute um people like going on the dark web and they have teams and stuff <clears throat> but do they have cyber law hackers that are catching these people or do they just assign a task force and say do this do this and that and then we'll have all the you know the evidence to to um pr prosecute these people so again, it's just curiosity in my mind. I'm just trying to figure it out. So let, let's say you have a task force that's after <clears throat> that's after um, 
drug dealers. Let's just say drug dealers, right? Because this is one one uh, story I heard on um, the Darknet Diaries. And they're going after this guy, or they're going after anybody that's selling drugs on their right, and they're trying to prosecute them. Now, what is their tactic for 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 catching these guys? Okay, so they're trying to be somebody they can trust. They're 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 going online. So you gotta have some basic, you know, communication, email, you know, skills, but you're gonna need <clears throat> The one hacker that's showing you how to get on the dark web, telling you the rules. How do you get that? You get somebody to flip, or you get a, or you get somebody that's done it before, that, that wants to be ethical now, or you get a, a, you know, some dude from Harvard that studied computer science and he had a, and he loves hacking or something, right? He, he never was bad, now he's good. So you gotta have that hacker first <clears throat> to show you how to do it. Then you get these special agents or whatnot that are that are going undercover as people or whatnot, and they're and they're trying to catch the person. Let's say and then they catch them. Let's say they catch them right on something, and they raid. They get a warrant and they raid them. They catch them. They find all the drugs he's selling or whatever, whatever he's doing. He's, you know, he's selling illegal IoT devices. It doesn't matter. And um, now they got him. But the thing is. Um, how do they prosecute him within the laws of cyber, right? What? How do they find out what laws he's breaking? They have to get an attorney that specializes in cyber laws, which they already have. So the, so the prosecution has a bunch of stuff set in place to prosecute these, these criminals legally. Now, does the defense have a side? <clears throat> Who is spending all this money to 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 set up a, a cyber defense uh, law firm is there money in it does anybody care which that's the whole point i'm saying like <clears throat> there's going to be a a niche there's going to be a boom in cyber defense attorneys when when all these guys are getting caught and they got money there's going to have to be a niche field there's going to have to be some kind of um, structure set up for them as well because regular attorneys aren't going to hack it anymore. They're, they're going to make plea deals. They're going to get intimidated and bullied by the because they don't really know the ins and outs and outs and ends of the law. <clears throat> so mark my words, you listen to this video, 10 years from now, there's going to be an upsurge of cyber law attorneys. And you could be on the bandwagon and get on it now if you're in cybersecurity. Get on it now, study, see if you can get into some programs that focus on cyber law. Right? I think that would be exciting. That would be awesome. I think I'm going to try to look into that here in the next five years. I'm not that old. I'll just be an old cyber law attorney. <laughs> like 50 studying cyber law. <laughs> get my cyber law degree and practicing and working as a cyber so and then people ask you what you know what are you doing I'm a, I'm a cyber lawyer cyber lawyer man what is that it sounds it just it just sounds exciting <clears throat> so start with this book I'm gonna read the crap out of this book I mean there's so many look surveillance and cyber there's your fourth amendment you know it just gives you ideas where to start to go do do your research the government's electronic surveillance is restricted by the Fourth Amendment. Oh no, we know that, right? <clears throat> the Fourth Amendment is amongst the greatest constitutional limit on the government's ability to exercise power over individuals. If the government obtains evidence of a crime in a matter that violates the Fourth Amendment, it's it's called a uh, uh, fruit from the forbidden tree or something like that or whatever. If the uh, evidence gathered during the search and seizure can be admitted as evidence in the criminal trial, the individual's rights were violated, so they have to drop all that. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, fruit from the poisonous tree or something like that, whatever. This section examines a Fourth Amendment application of the government's surveillance and the action of cyberspace. The Fourth Amendment states the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. 
shall not violate it, and no warrants sh sh no and no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause supported by the oath of information. So this probable cause is what they're gonna use to raid your house, right, or whatever, <clears throat> find all the, you know, <clears throat> of your of your client, you know, of your whatever you're defending. <clears throat> And the person who now I heard the story of the Dark Knight Diaries that this guy you know he was selling some stuff on there on the Dark Net and they he was working with another person and they caught the other person um, because I guess that person was doing something suspicious right <clears throat> now here's the thing the person so this guy that was that was selling this stuff um, knew about cyber, knew about regular laws. Like he took advantage of regular laws of the U.S. Postal Service. He was he was transporting stolen goods or something with the U.S. Postal Service. So he he knew that you needed some kind of um, probable cause to open up one of the packages, right? Um, or you had to get a warrant to open up the U.S. Postal Service package, right? But that's a normal law. It's not a cyber law. He was taking advantage of the normal law. Imagine if he knew all the cyber laws. So he would be even a harder to catch, right? Um, or if you knew all the cyber laws, you would be able to get him off of his crimes. You know, he'd be a great lawyer and make lots of money because these guys want to hire you, right? Um, just like a, 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 a criminal defense attorney. You know, nobody likes them, but you know, reality is everybody's everybody has the right to protection. This is stupid. It makes no sense. But when you know, defending all these criminals, well, everybody has a right to defense. And if they've got the money, I've got the time, right? I mean, these guys don't care. Lawyers are, are there to uh, make money. <clears throat> it's plain, they went to school to to save the world, and they will work for free. And, you know, most of them that went to school. And, became a criminal defense attorney and they're good at it and they make money they're driving jaguars and stuff that's america man i mean there it's it's the america is great because it's it's you have the right to to make money or whatever however legally you want legally right it's, it's legal to, to do that you know but there's a stigma on criminal defense attorneys by the self-righteous people go, oh, they, oh shut up this is ridiculous they 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 <clears throat> Somebody can change their ways uh, mid doing something, you know, life, right? That maybe is cr criminal now, but 10 years from now, he's Kevin Mitnick, you know? So it's just ridiculous. Everybody got to get off their high horse and, and stop that, right? <clears throat> Anyways, but there is, there is, a, um, I'm sure of it, a way to. Us, you know, study all this, and then see if you can put it into action and start your own little uh, cyber defense lawyer firm. Why not? Then you have to, or advising firm. You know, you have to be a lawyer. I mean, you can't be a lawyer, or maybe you can. Maybe you can. You can be an ex hacker and become a lawyer as well. And combine them two. That would be the ultimate. You know that would, you'd be able to practice law and then only pick cybersecurity cases. Um, or else you could just be an advisor, you know, or, or maybe partner up with the actual attorney. And there you go. He can, he can take the cases and you can advise on the cyber law side. And you'd be even more powerful, right? And then you can have one attorney and have about five advisors in cyber law and then just call it a cyber law firm. That's how I would see it. I don't know. Who knows? It's pretty exciting. So a whole new field, um, I would say. I haven't heard, I haven't seen anything. I haven't read about anything about cyber lawyers or cyber law firms. I'm sure there's tens of thousands of them. But I'm sure they're not what you think they are. <clears throat> they're just attorneys that maybe have, like, like I said, some advisors. But are they? But they're, but they're attorneys that, that's taken like IT classes or something, or you know, or whatever. They're not 
as sophisticated as the prosecuting side, I would say. Or maybe they are. Maybe there's pen, you know, because I know that there's pen test. So the, there's pen testing companies, right? So if somebody can, if somebody can, um, like know nothing about pen testing, just you know, be curious about it and get in at pen testing. Um, the team will cons concise of a bunch of different people. It'll have like a, the hacker guy. It'll have like the the social engineering guy or person. It'll have, you know, this and that. And then they'll penetrate. And then the, the companies and they'll charge them. And then they'll tell them what you know went wrong and all that. So that's a little company that does that, right? Uh, why can't there be a cyber law defense little companies that that comprise over people that know just cyber law and um, are either prosecuting or you know working for the FBI or 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 whatever or uh, being criminal defense attorneys so I don't know pretty interesting topic get this book read it um I am I'm gonna read it now this this book was kind of pricey this was like 80 bucks because it's a, te a school textbook or whatever I don't know what it is but um <clears throat> it's got a lot of interesting things like the encryption act <laughs> federal information security management act and i can go through and read this and this will help me in my career right now if it ever comes up right those are international cyber security law and it, you know cyber law cyber and the law of war Right? Was the cyber attack use of force violates international law? So, like, this is if you're using cyber attacks to attack a um, a nation or something like that. <clears throat> I mean, if you're using it to to actually be like an act of war, ransomware. So, this would be a great one to learn if you're if you're defending a client that got caught for ransomware. Right or whatever, supposedly got caught or whatever for ransomware, you can probably get them off. Or if you want to prosecute somebody, ransomware, you know, you, you know where to start. Read this book, do some more research. Um, if not now, <clears throat> I don't know, but if I was a lawyer, like an actual lawyer, and I was going to school, I'm sure there's cyber law classes, right? There, there has to be now. But uh, is there s specialized fields in cyber law already? I'm sure there is. There has to be. Um, um, you know, so. But are those people actually hackers or cybersecurity people? Probably not. They're probably just taking some of these classes. They're looking at it interesting, right? But, um, you know. It would be awesome if you could combine both, both the degrees, right? Like a cybersecurity degree and then focus in cyber law and then get a master's in cyber law. Boom. Then, you know, you should be able to advise or open your own cyber law firm. I don't understand that, you know, so there's gotta be, because you do that legally, right? No, because you have to pass a bar to be a lawyer, right? But what if you're just focusing in cyber law and you'll know more than regular lawyers know about it because it's a whole new area Sh should there not be a whole new cyber law bar and there probably is i don't know right <clears throat> but this is awesome here's your data breach notification laws by state right this is what they have to do if you're in in your state you get a violation um what how fast they have and, and what are the laws right summary of state data breach so in other words if uh, they have a data breach at a company in alabama you know so in idaho i'm gonna go to idaho in idaho here's what they have to do here's the code here's, you know if an individual's first name initial name last name Social security number, what, all these criteria, except for something like this, <clears throat> they have to notificate you um, the most expedient time possible without unreasonable delay. Right? What does that even mean? <laughs> 
So, I mean, there's like, you know, but this is the, this is the data breach laws of Idaho. This is a good thing to know when you're working uh, for a company or you're, you know, you know, your, you know your stuff in cyber law. So, I don't know. I think this is a very, very, very interesting topic. And if you guys, you know, I, I recommend everybody getting some kind of cyber law book and going through it and whether you're any part of cybersecurity, any part, knowing a lot about the cyber laws is just a given, right? You know, it's just a given because you're going to know when people, you're going to have to know when people violate, you know, you're going to have to know when uh, <clears throat> you're in violation. And cybersecurity is so new that you can be on a sitting there on a you know your team brand new with, or something with people and you notice that we're violating the cyber law or something or whatever that you think you read in a book then you can bring that up and then maybe your supervisor would be like huh that does sound right let's go ahead and check more into that and maybe you'll save a lot of time and grief because. What we're trying to do in cybersecurity right now is have everybody on the on both sides, red team, blue team, taken more serious. And that's our, the cyber culture right now is so garbage. It's not even funny. So you nobody listens. You know, cyber cultural awareness is a big thing, and um, your your people are on your team. If you're on a good cyber team. Are gonna want to listen to most stuff you say that like that because we're, they have more of an open mind because they want others to have more of an open mind about cybersecurity. So, because um, it's so important right now, it's not even funny. But a lot of people don't listen. And if you're working for a great company, let's say government, usually government too, are are, are all on board in, in all aspects of cybersecurity. It's awesome. But you know that's just my. Um, uh, <clears throat> experience now. I don't, I don't know about any other government places, but um, maybe they're not. <clears throat> and especially companies, corporations, um, they usually are are all for cybersecurity when they get hacked. And they lose a lot of money. Then they're all for it. Right? It usually takes that first attack. So, um, Right now, cybersecurity is, is such a booming and new field that you, and you wouldn't think it would still be, but it is. And I would say jump on this now because there's going to be a lot of money in it later, I, I would say, in the next 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, cybersecurity law. And I'm just waiting to, to see if there is an emphasis on this and any kind of pathway and, and stuff like that, you know, new emerging working fields for cybersecurity law, uh, then, then, you know, I would love to get in on that. So and I'm sure that, like I said, I'm sure there is already, but not, not to the level that I'm thinking, or I would have heard about it. You know, somebody would have been talking about it, you know, <laughs> you know, being able to join cybersecurity law firms with, <laughs> And stuff like that. They're just straight cybersecurity law lawyers or advisors, right? I don't know. Anyways, I had fun with this video. So hopefully you guys had fun. And that was Hack the File. I'll see you next time.